Hi, we're Team 10. Today we're going to present to you um, a very interesting topic and it's about LGBTQ mental health. Consisting in our team is Jitesh, Jennifer, Marie, Rhonda and myself, David. Uh, we have divided this topic into some categories so that we can try and give you a comprehensive overview of the mental health issues that the LGBT community face. To start with, we found it important to define the LGBT community. Who makes up this community? Is this easy to define? We then thought it would be useful to provide the class with some context of the situation with some facts about the LGBTQ community and the mental health concerns that they face. I'll be covering both these topics. <clears throat> then we will go into the issues relevant to mental health of the LGBT community. This will be presented to you by Rhonda. Jitesh will then explain to you further detail about what specific mental, specific mental health concerns the LGBT community face. Jennifer will provide some insight on what can be done to improve this situation and Marie will provide some specific details on the role of the community health nurse in regards to, to the topic. Then she will summarise our presentation. So who is the community? The community is very diverse in its nature, as you can imagine simply by looking at the acronym. Actually, if you delve deeper, there are more letters and people that can, be, that can join the community at any time. But for the sake of this presentation, we have limited it to the LGBT community, which stands for the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender and Queer Community. It is actually quite difficult to gauge who is in the community, so I've divided it into two parts to explain it. The LGB is lesbian, gay and bisexual, bisexual individuals. These individuals identify as homosexual or open to being attracted to the same sex. I've been broken it down to a simpler terms in the next slide. But ultimately to be in the LGB community category, it is about having a sexual identity that involves being attracted to the same sex as you are, or open to it. Transgender and queer people, the TQ part of the acronym, are people who do not always identify with the gender assigned to them at birth. These people may also be gay, lesbian, bi or questioning their sexuality, but they do not define themselves by their sexual attraction, but rather by their gender identity. As you can see, this, the community is very diverse. With members of the community being very different from each other, they are uniform based on common experiences and with a goal of empowering their community by increasing the population. They are united primarily by the fact that they are not heterosexual and that they are a minority. These figures may, might slightly be out of date, but according to Gates, in 2011, 1.9% of Canadians identified as gay, lesbian and bi, while 0.3% of the population identified as being transgender. So, just to clarify, lesbians are individuals who are female and are attracted or perceive attraction to women. Gays are men that identify as being attracted or perceived attraction to men. Bisexual people are males or females who do not determine their attraction based on gender. Therefore, open to relationships or sexual experience with male or females, same or opposite gender. Transgender people are people who do not identify as being the same gender as their gender assigned to them at birth. For example, someone with the assigned gender based on having male sex organs may actually identify as being female, or vice versa. Queer, also revered, referred to as genderqueer or questioning, refers to individuals who do not identify themselves as a specific gender. They may use varying pronouns to explain themselves, or maybe gender fluid or questioning their gender identity. So what are the facts and statistics? The World Health, Health Organization World Health, World Health Organization removed homosexuality from its list of mental disorders as late as nineteen ninety. despite being delisted as an official mental disorder, many cultures continue to perceive same sex attraction as perverse and wrong. Gender Identity Disorder continues to be listed in the Diagnostic and Systematic Manual of Mental Disorders as a 
diagnostic category. LGBTQ people are almost twice as likely to experience childhood mistreatment, interpersonal violence, personal loss, or developing post-traumatic stress disorder. LGBTQ youth are 14 more times likely to commit suicide than their heterosexual peers. A study found that 77% of trans people had seriously considered suicide and 45% had attempted suicide. Trans youth were at significant risk. The study of trans people found that 20% of trans people had experienced physical or sexual assault due to being trans. The same study revealed that 35%, 34% were subjected to verbal threats or harassment. A Canadian study found that bisexuals were overrepresented in the lowest income categories in Ontario. Half of the, of the trans people in Ontario are living on less than $15,000 a year. As I have mentioned, the LGBT community is diverse in their sexual identity and their gender. Unfortunately, what they have in common is the poor acceptance and poor mental health and well-being. Well -being. The Mental Health Association of Ontario Land outlines three significant determinants of positive mental health and well-being. Freedom from discrimination, freedom from violence, access to economic resources. All three factors greatly impact LGBTQ community individuals and, and in Ontario. My name is Rhonda and I will talk about the identified community issues in LGBTQ population. These issues have a negative impact on the physical and mental health of LGBTQ individuals and communities. I have identified the following issues. Stigma and discrimination, prejudice, violence and hate crimes, sexual and physical assaults and harassment or verbal threats, family rejection and poverty. First, let's talk about stigma and discrimination. The 519 defined stigma as a severe disapproval or discontentment with a person or group on the grounds of their particular circumstance, usually based on differences from social or cultural norms. While discrimination is defined as any form of unequal treatment based on a ground protected by human rights legislation that results in disadvantage, whether imposing extra burdens or denying benefits. LGBTQ individual and communities experience stigma and discrimination. Both stigma and discrimination increase homophobia and stress in LGBTQ individuals. The stigma experienced by LGBTQ people can have a variety of negative consequences throughout the lifespan. In addition, an LGBTQ individual with mental health condition may face challenges in accessing mental health services that he or she needed and may face discrimination on the basis of both mental disability and sexual orientation. Let's also talk about prejudice, violence, and hate crimes. These factors have a negative effect on mental and physical health of LGBTQ communities. Prejudice is a negative prejudgment or preconceived feelings or notions about another person a group of persons based on perceived characteristics rather than empirical evidence. Prejudice may result to hatred and violence. As is stated in Canadian Mental Health Association website, hate crimes motivated by sexual orientation are the most violent form of hate crimes. Hate crimes in Canada is more than doubled from 2007 to 2008. In particular, transgender people experience high levels of hatred violence, and institutional discrimination. Now let's talk about sexual and physical assaults and harassment or verbal threats. Harassment is a course of comments or actions such as unwelcome attention, jokes, threats, remarks, name calling, touching, or other behaviors that are known or owed reasonably to be known to be unwelcome, offensive, embarrassing, humiliating, or demeaning. An Ontario-based study found out that 20% of transgender people had experienced physical or sexual assault due to their identity. And another study found out that 34% of transgender people were subjected to verbal threats or harassment because of their identity. 
Family rejection also has a great impact in LGBTQ's mental health. Based on Rainbow Health Ontario, LGBTQ who experienced family rejection as adolescents reported high rates of depression, drug use, unprotected sex, and attempted suicide. Aside from family rejection, poverty is also identified as a factor in exacerbating LGBTQ men mental health. A study conducted in Canada found that bisexuals were overrepresented in the lowest income categories, and an Ontario based study found that half of transgender people were living on less than 15,000 salary a year. In addition to community issues, I also found a health-related issue concerning LGBTQ population. This will be the last part of my presentation. So it was found out that LGBTQ individuals are at risk of contracting HIV or AIDS. According to Canadian AIDS Society, gay men and men who have sex with men or what they call MSM account for approximately 56% of all cases of HIV or AIDS cases in Canada. And according to Ontario Public Health, in Ontario, there are over 26,000 people living with HIV or AIDS and um, were gay and bisexual men are considered as one of the most affected communities. The next part of our presentation is about the mental health issues in LGBTQ population, which will be presented by Chitesh. Thank you. Hi, this is Jitesh. Today I'm going to discuss about specific mental health conditions facing the LGBTQ community. They are depression, suicide or suicidal thought, anxiety, homophobia, obsessive compulsive disorder, substance abuse, and stress. Now I am going to explain about depression. Depression can be a serious issue for anyone but homosexual depression may be even bigger concern as gay people are at high greater risk for depression and other mental illness than general population. This increase in gay depression is not because an individual is gay but rather because gay people live in a society that shows stigma and discrimination towards sexual minority population. Having to continually deal with the LGBT discrimination and stigma can affect mental health. Homosexual depression may also be a problem because many lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people feel uncomfortable or other healthcare provider and discussing issues pertinent to homosexuality. However, the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association list depression and anxiety among the top 10 things that gay people need to discuss with their doctors. Numerous studies have shown that lesbian, gay and bisexual youth have a higher rate of suicide attempts than do heterosexual youth. The Suicide Prevention Resource Center synthesized these studies and estimated that between 30 and 40 percentage of LGBTQ youth, depending on age and sex group, have attempted suicide. It is impossible to know the exact suicide rate of LGBTQ youth because sexuality and gender minorities are often hidden and even unknown, particularly in this age group. Further research is currently being done to explain the prevalence of suicide among LGBTQ youth. LGBTQ people are more likely to use alcohol, tobacco and other drugs than the general population, are likely to use abstain, report higher rates of substance abuse problems and are more likely to continue heavily drinking in their later life. LGBTs use alcohol, tobacco and other drugs for the same reason as others. But their likelihood for doing so is heightened by personal and cultural stress resulting from anti-gay bias. 
reliance on bar for socialization stress caused by discrimination and targeted advertising by tobacco and alcohol business in gay and lesbian publications are all believed to contribute to increase the pressures on LGBT individuals to engage in substance abuse. Homophobia was coined in 1972 to describe fear and loathing of LGBT people by others. In generalized homophobia is a form of self-limiting, self-loathing, an important concept to understand in developing substance abuse service for this population. Anti-gay bias also resulting in frequent hate crimes aimed at LGBT youth, adding further to stress of homophobia and heterosexism. An assumption that heterosexism is preferred norm for everyone. Since early 1980s, AIDS phobia from both outside of the world and as another from internalized negative self-perception causes added stress for many LGBTQ individuals. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Obsessive Compulsive Disorder is an anxiety disorder characterized by persistent instructive ideas of thoughts, impulses or images which often result in performing compulsive rituals over and over again. Typical compulsions are washing, checking and arranging things, and counting. These actions give individuals with the OCD only temporary relief from their anxiety. With early diagnosis and a right treatment, people can avoid the suffering that comes with the OCD. Stress describe chronically high levels of stress faced by members of stigmatized LGBTQ groups. It may be caused by a number of factors, including poor social support and low socioeconomic status. But the most well understood causes of stress are interpersonal prejudice and discrimination. Indeed, Numerous scientific studies have shown that those individuals experience a high degree of prejudice with causes stress responses, for example, high blood pressure and anxiety that occur over time, eventually leading to poor mental health and physical health. LGBT support groups. Um, there is Catholic Family Service Ottawa which they offer counseling and support services provided to children 6 to 12 and adolescents, adults, couples, and families. Next is the Center Town Community Health Center. Um, they provide a range of services for the LGBTQ communities. Center Town Community Health Center um, provides outreach support and counseling to the LGBT youth ages 12 to 25 years old and their families as well. Support for hormone assessment for trans youth. This is available in school. For the Center Town Community Health Center, Gay Zone, they provide a wide range of programs and services for gay, bi, trans men and other men who have sex with men. For the City of Ottawa Sexual Health Center, they offer counseling testing, treatment, and resources related to sexual health. The Eagle Canada National Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transhuman Rights Organization Advancing Equality, Diversity, Education, and Justice. Family Service Ottawa Counseling 18 years old. Women of all ages are referred to the organization by officials working in the criminal criminal justice system including lawyers medical professionals social workers social assistant workers and by community-based organizations and agencies they also provide assistance to women involved in the criminal justice system and those at risk of coming into conflict with the law they also provide practical and effective support services for women incarcerated in provincial and federal institutions and for women in Ottawa. 
Last one is the Family Service Ottawa around the Rainbow community. The LGBTQ identified counselor who works with individuals and couples ages 18 and above on coming out and exploring gender identity or sexual identity and other emotional issues. For the additional organizations, um, there is National Alliance on Mental Illness, Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association, and the Association of Gay and Lesbian Psychiatric. What can be done to improve this? Supportive environments are key to mental health. A Canadian study found that the support from family and friends reduced stress and contributed to positive mental health, health in young gays, lesbians, and bisexuals. Experiencing positive responses to coming out is associated with reduced risk of su substance abuse. Two studies in the U.S. found that the 89% of lesbians and bisexual women experienced a negative reaction when they came out to their doctor. A study of medical students found that one quarter were significantly homophobic and 9% viewed homosexuality as a mental disorder. This is Marie. Allow me to discuss to you the role of community health nurse. To start with, here are the key factors for positive mental health and well-being for LGBTQ individuals. They need support from family and friends, particularly the youth. The general population, on the other hand, will benefit more and experience less stress if they will have supportive workplaces and neighborhoods. Also, they need low levels of internalized homophobia, which can be fostered and supported through identification or community building with other LGBT individuals. It will help them achieve autonomy and deliverance if they will experience positive responses to coming out. And lastly, the social determinants of health should be addressed so to achieve proper medication, medical attention, and equality on their behalf. In terms of educational programs, the RNAO recommends that nurses receive education and training on human rights and health equity that addresses LGBTQ health issues. Additional training is needed to ensure that LGBTQ clients are not subjected to stereotyping or discrimination and that the gender of trans clients is not misidentified. Safe and secure educational environments at all levels of education should be provided. Individualized education and counseling should be done by the community health nurse. Such moments in these settings have been shown to have positive and clinical significant effects on behaviors in persons with chronic and acute conditions. Community health nurses are expected to encourage institutions to broaden any non-discrimination policies or statements to include sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. Community health nurses are expected to promote family acceptance of LGBTQ adolescents and encouraging them to connect with LGBTQ culture since it is essential in reducing health disparities among LGBTQ youth. LGBT-focused community resources and professional organizations to address LGBTQ-related health needs should also be provided. Healthcare providers should be aware of resources available to help those LGBTQ people who are at greatest risk for suicide. Here are some of the online services and resources that LGBT people and their family can avail. PFLAG or the Parents Friends of Lesbians and Gays, the itsgetbetter.org. It's also, tall numbers that offer free peer support that are included in this discussion are also easily available. Health promotion programs need to be sensitive to the diverse culture, norms, and beliefs of the people for whom the program has been developed. Nurses should ensure that interventions are culturally appropriate, linguistically accessible, and appropriate for their needs. Nurses should provide fair and safe environments for people who identify as transgender or who are gender variant or gender non-conforming in institutional settings such as supportive living environments. Community health nurses are encouraged to support access to appropriate treatment in institutional settings for people of all gender 
identities and expressions, including gender transition therapies. Community health nurses are responsible in addressing the LGBT health care needs in a comprehensive, coordinated, and culturally competent way since community-based approaches in conjunction with targeted approaches increase the likelihood for success to improve personal, mental, and community health. Our group worked hard four weeks in order to come up with a comprehensive discussion to give importance to the social and mental health issues of the LGBT community, a community that is less represented and incessantly becomes an object to rampant social exclusion, discrimination, and violence due to their sexual preference and orientation. We hope that through this presentation, we are able to give justification to the importance of LGBT community and to give them credits on the emotional, physical, and social detriments that these people are experiencing in their battle to seize the current social stigma. It is about time to support the obliteration of the LGBT's social marginalization that contributes to the undesirable effects of their mental health and their life as a whole. What they need right now is to enjoy the freedom to choose their sexual identity, to be able to accomplish their health care needs and access appropriate health services, and to be treated fairly in any way possible.